Chapter 12 The Purpose of Gifts in This Early Church 12 1 3 The Corinthians were being carried away with the spiritual gifts. 12 4 11 The Purpose of the Gifts for the Body of Christ. 12 12 31 Gifts and Unity in the Church. 12 1 Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. To ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. For a time the Corinthian church had many spiritual gifts to show the Jewish synagogue next door that God was now working with Paul. Paul does not want them to be ignorant concerning spiritual gifts. Since the Tower of Babel, Gen 10 and 11, Rom. 1 colon 18-28, the Gentiles' problem was that they were foolishly led to worship dumb idols that could not speak, and now they were making a god out of their spiritual gifts. Three wherefore I give you to understand, that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. The purpose of the gifts was to reveal God's word and minister to others. All speaking is spiritual communication. Jesus said, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. John 6 verse 63. However, even today many of our Pentecostal friends get carried away with what they perceive to be spiritual gifts. For this reason, Paul said, I will help you understand how to discern if someone is speaking for God when they prophesy and are not of false apostles, 2 Cor. 11 13, no man that spoke by the Spirit of God called Jesus cursed, and no man could say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. There are tests for the Spirit in prophecy also, Deuteronomy. 18 22, 1 John 4 verse 2. Since the spiritual gifts ceased just as Paul said they would, 13.8-10, we now ask does what is said line up with the Bible? Our modern tongue satanic? A wise grace pastor wrote, we do not wish to imply from this that the modern gift of tongues is satanic, in fact, we believe quite the opposite. Since in this dispensation God has ceased from giving the gift of tongues, Satan is no longer trying to counterfeit this gift. Since no man today has the miraculous God-given ability to speak in a foreign tongue, Satan is not empowering anyone to do likewise. We believe that the gibberish that passes for the gift of tongues today is nothing more than the emotional product of the religious flesh of men from the article The Prophet of Spiritual Gifts by Pastor Ricky Kurth, December 19, 2021. For now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. 5. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. 6. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. The Holy Ghost that came down on Pentecost stayed to minister to Paul's group. For he, Christ, that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me, Paul, toward the Gentiles, Gal. 2 colon 8, there were a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit, 4. Gifts were administered differently, but the same Lord, 5. The gifts operated in different ways, but it was the same God that did all the work of value in all, 6. Christ is Spirit, Lord, and God, in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, Colossians 2 verse 9. Paul wrote in the present because he did not have the entire counsel of God. All believers had gifts by the same Spirit to profit all the members in the early church, 1017. But self-interest among the church members had caused what was meant to bring them together to divide them. 8 for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, 9 to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, 10 to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. To illustrate what he means Paul lists nine gifts given by the Spirit, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, healing, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, diverse kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues, translating of the
foreign language spoken. Women were also praying in tongues and prophesying, 11 colon 5. When the Holy Ghost fell on the 120 men and women in the upper room, they all spoke God's word with divinely given tongues that were understood by those who spoke those different languages, Acts 1 15, 2 colon 4 12. Tongues is being able to speak a language that you have never formally studied to learn. 11. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. That list of gifts, all work by the same spirit, Christ's, x3, who distributes each gift as he wants. 12. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all. The members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. 13. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. Paul makes an analogy between the human body and the body of Christ. We are one group made up of many members working in unison. All are important, no one is more important than the other. Rom. 12 colon 3 dash 8, all the members are controlled by the same head, Christ, F. 1 22, 23, Colossians 1 verses 18 and 24, 2 19. In Acts 2 verse 4, Christ baptized the believers with the Holy Ghost, Matt. 3 11, Heb. 6 colon 4, since Acts 9, we are all baptized by one spirit into one body. We are all made to drink into one spirit. We all partake of the same Spirit, Christ's life, His Spirit, His righteousness. Our baptism is spiritual identification, without water, Rom. 6 colon 3, 4. We are spiritually the same. There is neither Jew nor Greek, Gentile. There is neither male nor female, Gal. 3 28. 14 for the body is not one member, but many. The body of Christ is made up of many members. 15 If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? The foot is still part of the body, even if it is not the hand. 16 And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body functioned the same such as an eye, how could it hear? Members are different just as body parts are different. Each different part is still of the body. 17. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Paul says that God gave different gifts so that all could benefit from each other's gifts. We grow like a living body or organism, F. 4, 15, 16. 18. But now hath God set the members every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. God has placed every member in the body the way he wants. 19. And if they were all one member, where were the body? If everyone was one body part such as an eye there would not be a complete body. 20. But now are they many members, yet but one body. But now there are many different members that have different gifts, and yet, we are one body or group or unit. 21. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. We need every member in our group, we are a team. 22. Nay, much more those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary, the members that we think are weak are needed. 23. And those members of the body, which we think. To be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Paul says we should bestow more honor on those we think are less honorable, then the less appealing members will become more attractive. 24 For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. 25 That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. The attractive members have no need for more honor. God had duly mixed the body of Christ together so that there was a mixture of gifted people. He gives more abundant honor to those who lacked the other gifts. It is not spiritual uniformity, but spiritual unity, 110 F. 4 colon 3, 4, 16. It is not a homogeneous mixture, but more like a fruit salad. 
All the different fruits make the salad so nice. When some members do not follow Christ's Apostle Paul, there is strife and division, schism, like there was in Corinth. All the factions in Corinth should unite behind Paul because Christ is no longer doing his earthly ministry, 2 Cor. 516, but his heavenly. There should not be any division, but the same care for each other. Some Hebrew ministers continue to be a problem at Corinth, 2 Cor. 1114, 15, 22. Imagine the power the body of Christ would have if it was recognized by mankind as the true universal church that it is. 26. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. We suffer if one of us suffers, and we rejoice and cheer if one of us is honored. There is no room for self-interest. 27. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. We are one group, made up of distinct and different members. 28. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Paul ranks gifts in the early church in the order of importance. It was first apostles, second prophets, then teachers, workers of miracles, gifts of healing, and speaking in different tongues or languages was last. They valued the least valuable gift most. The prophets were able to speak God's words after they had been revealed to Paul. The prophets could also discern which letters by Apostle Paul were inspired by the Holy Spirit and the order they should be placed in the Bible. Today, there are no spiritual gifts or supernaturally gifted people. We have something much better. We have the complete. Word of God and the Holy Spirit in us, F. 3 colon 16 dash 21. We all need to study the Bible rightly divided, 2 Tim. 2 15 dot 29 are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? 30 have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? No. Even in Corinth, not everyone had the same gifts. They did not all speak in tongues, for example. Paul's many sign gifts confirmed that he was their apostle, just as Peter was Christ's apostle to Israel, Gal. 2 7 9. Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs, and wonders, and mighty deeds. 2 Cor. 1212. 12. Israel's commission included the two signs of the kingdom, healing and casting out devils. Exodus 4 verses 1 to 9. Zech. 13 2. The Lord will need to heal the believers in Israel since priests need to be without blemish and after Satan and his angels are cast down to earth in the middle of the tribulation they will need to cast out devils, Leviticus. 21 colon 16 dash 21, Mark 16 verses 15 to 18, Revelation 12 verses 7 to 9. Paul was not harmed by a snake and last healed islanders on Melita, Acts 28 verses 3 to 9. After Acts, Paul lost his gift of healing and could not heal Epaphroditus, Trophimus, Timothy, or himself, 2 Cor. 12 colon 7, Philosophy. 2 27, 1 Tim. 5 23, 2 Tim. 4 20, Our healing takes place at the rapture. 31 But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet shew I unto you a more excellent way. Paul said, Desire the best gifts. Yet he will show them a more excellent way. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. 1 Corinthians 13,4-7 Kiv Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. My. Belongs. To. Jesus. Chapter 13 Using Sign Gifts in Love and Their Impending Cessation 13,1-13 Ministry Gifts Must Be Exercised in Love and When They Will Cease. 13 1 Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass, or a tinkling cymbal. 
Charity means love, but love can be a feeling, while charity is self-sacrifice for the benefit of others, the more excellent way, 1231. The Father intervened in human history and spared not his own Son, but delivered him up for us all, Rom. 832. God's solution to our sin problem was to graciously give us his Son's righteousness, 2 Cor. 521. The motive behind everything we do needs to be love for God and others. The Corinthians had more sign gifts than any of the other churches yet they were as babes, new believers, or carnal, selfish in the flesh like the lost. After salvation, we are to walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, Rom. 8 4. If a believer had the gift of speaking other languages that he had never studied, but did not have charity, he was like the noise of thunderous brass gong or an irritating tinkling cymbal. Some at Corinth had become nothing but deafening noise. Before I came to write division, I did not have very much fruit of the Spirit in my life. Gal. 5 22-26 Since I thought the body of Christ began in Acts 2, I had unknowingly put myself under the law. The law then made my sin nature, my flesh, come alive and abound exceedingly. I became legalistic, critical, and judgmental. Paul said, I was alive without the law once, when under grace, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died, when he put himself back under the law, sin came alive in him and he was functionally useless to God, Rom. 7 9, the law is holy, just, and good, but the problem is that it activates the sin that resides in our mortal body, Rom. 7 12, 13. It was not until I started to understand the Bible rightly divided that I began to see fruit in my life. The fruit of the Spirit, graces, has eternal value because it is something we allow Christ to do through us. This is another reason why everyone should learn how to rightly divide the word of truth. It is so important to know that both the body of Christ and the dispensation of grace began in Acts 9 with Paul's salvation on the road to Damascus, 1 Tim, 1 15, 16, and ends at the rapture. 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all. Mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. Asterisk notice the use of all in this chapter. Paul speaks hypothetically. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all the mysteries and all knowledge in the Bible, and have all faith so I could move mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. We must add love to our understanding of his word. The mountain represents a kingdom in prophecy. In the tribulation, Antichrist will set up his one world government and one world religion. The little flock will be praying and fasting to remove that mountain, Antichrist's rule in Jerusalem, Matt. 1720, Rev 18, 1 Peter 5 verse 13. 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. If I sacrifice all I own, and even give my body to be burned, but am destitute of the Spirit of Jesus, then there is no profit. We offer our bodies a living sacrifice for Christ to live his life through, Rom. 12 colon 1, 2. For charity suffereth long, and is kind, charity envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, five doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, Paul describes and defines what charity is, and is not. He tells us how charity behaves toward others, so we know how we should be. Charity suffers long, and is kind. Charity does not envy. Charity is not absorbed with her own self-importance. We constantly need to check our motives so we are not puffed up. We must always remember that apart from Christ, we have no hope. F. 2 colon 11 13. Charity does not behave rudely. Charity is generous in the way she treats others and does not envy. Envy is a terrible sin. PROV. 27 colon 4. God knows the counsel of our hearts. Cain envied his brother and killed him. There is no room for envy in the body of Christ. There is so much work that needs to be done in these last days, 2 Tim 3 1, in the dispensation of grace. It is all hands on deck. We should all be so busy with our own ministry that we do not have time to criticize someone else's. So many are not saved because they have not heard the clear gospel message of what Christ has done for us, 1 Cor. 
15,34, or have added their own works to his, Rom, 4,4, 14. Furthermore, so few have come to the knowledge of the word of God rightly divided, 2 Tim, 2,15, Charity believes that it is possible for anyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth, 1 Tim, 2,4, the truth for the body of Christ is found in Paul's writings, Romans to Philemon, and is the Mystery This truth must be divided from the rest of the Bible which is truth about Christ's earthly ministry to Israel, prophecy. After our rapture and after the tribulation, Christ will set up his rightful one-world government and one-world religion. Charity does not behave herself inappropriately, she is not seeking her own benefit. Charity is not easily provoked to anger, and does not think evil of others. 6. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. 7. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity does not rejoice in evil, but rejoices in sharing the truth. Thy word is truth, John 17, 17b. We are thankful for everything the Spirit reveals to us so we can share it with others. We want others to have the same joy and clarity we have under grace. Charity carries the burden for others and is always ready to believe the best of every person. Charity endures all things for the sake of others. 8. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail, whether there be tongues, they shall cease, whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Charity, Christ's love through us never fails, but gifts will. Prophecies will fail to continue, and tongues will stop. Special supernatural knowledge will vanish away. The Spirit helped Paul write down Christ's new revelation for his new group. Jesus said, the Spirit of Truth, the Comforter, would help the little flock to write the four Gospels, John 14 verse 26, to speak for God in Acts 2 to 7, John 15 verses 26 and 27, and to write Hebrews to Revelation he will show you things to come, John 16 verse 13. Thus prophecy is complete. The book of Revelation must have been written before Paul said, all scripture, 2 Tim, 3 16, there is no record in the Bible of the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in AD 70, so the Bible must have been completed before then. Nero died in AD 68, so Paul was probably executed before then. Paul wrote this first Corinthian letter from Ephesus during Acts 19. Christ had let Paul know that he would have the full revelation of the mystery by the time he arrived in Rome. And I am sure that, when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ, Rome. 1529, Paul wrote the last installment of the word of God, whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God, Colossians 1 verse 25. Words that are written down can be referred to and do not depend on someone's memory, 2 Peter 1 verse 19. Peter called Paul's letter scripture, 2 Peter 3 verses 15 and 16. The sign gifts ended after Paul set Israel aside for the third time in. Rome in AD 61, Acts 13 46, 18 colon 6, 28 colon 28. Second Timothy was the last book of the Bible. 9 For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. By this time in his Acts ministry, Paul had only received part of the revelation of the mystery from the Lord. Christ had said in Acts 9, as recorded in Acts 26, that he would appear to him and progressively give him further revelation, Acts 26 verse 16, 2 Cor, 12 colon 1, 7. 10 But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Paul taught that the sign gifts would cease when that which is perfect is come, the entire word of God. 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Paul uses himself in an illustration to represent the body of Christ when it was a child, following the same order as v. 8. In his childhood, he talked as a child, prophecy in part, understood as a child, tongues limited, and thought as a child, had incomplete knowledge. But when he became a full-grown man, he put away childish things, spiritual gifts. We should not desire to go back to the childish things of sign gifts that have been put away. 
12 for now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Mirrors in Paul's day gave only a dim reflection, so everyone else knew what Paul looked like, but Paul himself only knew in part what he looked like. When Paul has the full revelation of the mystery from Christ written, then he will know God as clearly as others men knew him. When the Bible is complete we shall be able to see perfectly and know all that God has said to us. The purpose of the gifts was the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith, have all his word, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, f. For colon 8-16, we will be able to be conformed to the image of his Son, Rom. 8-29, by the Spirit's effectual working of his word in us, 1 Thess. 2.13, none of the gifts in this letter, in Romans 12 verses 9 to 16, or in Ephesians 4 verse 11, are in effect today. Pastors and teachers need to study the Bible, 2 Tim. 2.15, his spirit, life, in us and the entire Bible are more excellent than spiritual gifts. The Bible rightly divided is all the instruction we need to be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, 2 Tim. 3.17, 13 and now Abadeth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. God used the gifts to kick start the church, but now it runs on its own. So now we should focus on faith. Hope and charity which last, but the greatest of these is charity, Colossians 1 verse 3. Paul praised the believer's work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in Thessalonica, 1 Thess. 1 colon 3, the only other place in the Bible where Paul talks about a mirror is 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. We behold the glory of the Lord when we look into his word. We renew our minds by studying his word, the mind of Christ. The Bible is complete and there is no more revelation to be added. For nearly 2,000 years, we have been privileged to be God's first group to have the most valuable thing on earth, the entire Bible. It is so beneficial to be able to read both the Old and New Testaments in the same English language in the King James Bible. Before God made two groups to live in two realms, he planned out what he would need to include in his book for us and how he would win the war with Satan, Job 38 verses 22 and 23, Luke 14 verses 26 to 32. After iniquity was found in Lucifer, our wise God used Satan to identify the believers who will live in the new heaven and earth. God had Paul write our instructions in mystery, Rom. 15 colon 4, 15. Israel's history was a dress rehearsal and in the future knowledge shall be increased, Dan. 12 colon 4, God sprinkled the information his earthly saints will need to get through the tribulation and into the kingdom throughout the prophetic scriptures, but Daniel, the four Gospels, and Hebrews to Revelation will be especially useful. Are you really following the commandments of the Lord? Apostle Paul said, If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 37 KJV Rejecting Paul is rejecting Christ. Saved by grace through faith not works. Jesus sent Paul Romans Philemon. Chapter 14 Regulation of Spiritual Gifts in the Local Assembly 14,1-26 Prophesy is the superior gift. Paul contrasts tongues and prophesy. 14,27-40 Order in the Church in Regard to Spiritual Gifts 14 colon 1 follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. Let love be our motive. Charity is the kind of sacrificial love for another that we can only display when Christ is working through us. Paul said, covet earnestly the best gifts, 1231, and now he says that prophesy, to say what Paul had said, is the best gift. Prophecy is God's message, while to prophesy is to give the message. Paul contrasts tongues and prophesy. 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. God understands all foreign languages that he gave at the Tower of Babel, Genesis 11 verse 7, but not the other people unless they speak that same language. 
What that person said was a mystery. 3. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. But he that prophesies speaks the word of God unto men which edifies, encourages, and comforts us. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. 5. I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied, for greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret, that the church may receive edifying. Paul wants everyone to be able to speak in tongues, but he would rather have them prophesy. To prophesy is greater than tongues because unless the speaker interprets what he is saying, no one in the church will be edified. 6. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you, except I shall speak to you either by revelation, or by knowledge, or by prophesying, or by doctrine? If I come to you speaking in a language you cannot understand, what will I profit you unless I speak to you things revealed to me, truth I know, the words of Christ, or doctrine? 7. And even things without life-giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? 8. For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? 9. So likewise. Ye, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. God's words are life-giving. John 6 verse 63. Unless a musical instrument makes a distinct sound, how can we make sense of it? For if a trumpet gives an uncertain sound, no one will charge into battle. So likewise, if no one can understand what you are saying, you might as well speak into the air. 10 There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. There are many different voices or real languages in the world and all are important. 11 Therefore if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. But if I, Paul, do not know that language I will be like a barbarian, not Greek speaking, to the other person, and he to me. 12 Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. 13 Wherefore let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. 14 For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. 15 What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Similarly, since you are so eager for spiritual gifts, seek to excel in edifying the church. For this reason, the person who speaks in a tongue that no one understands should pray that God will help him interpret it. For if I pray in a tongue to God that is unknown to me, my spirit prays, but I do not understand what I prayed. What is it then to be fruitful? It is being able to speak, pray, and sing with the spirit and understanding. 16 Else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say Amen at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest? 17 For thou verily givest thanks well, but the other is not edified. Or else when you bless God in the Spirit, how shall a person who is learning be able to agree with your giving of thanks to God, when he does not understand what you are saying? You may truly be saying thanks to God well, but no one can learn from what you said. 18 I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than ye all, 19 Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding, that by my voice I might teach others also, than ten thousand words in an unknown tongue. I thank my God, that I speak more languages than you all. Paul needed them in his Travels and Ministry Yet in the church, I would rather speak five words so that I use my voice to edify others than 10,000 words that no one understands. An example of five words is Christ died for our sins. 20 Brethren, be not children in understanding, howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. Be not children in understanding, but in malice, to intentionally harm or hinder others, be children, but in understanding what God said be adults.
21 in the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. In Israel's past, the Lord said that even if he spoke with men of other tongue and other lips Israel will still not hear me, ISA. 28 colon 11, 12, dot. 22 Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Tongues were not a sign to those who believe, but to those who believe not. But prophesying does not serve the unbeliever, but the believer. The Jews said the Gentiles have our signs, and the Gentiles said God must be working with us because we have Israel's signs, 1 Cor. 1 22. 23 If therefore the whole church be come together into one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned, or unbelievers, will they not say that ye are mad? If the whole church is gathered, and those who are learning Paul's sound doctrine or unbelievers enter and hear the chaos of everyone speaking in various languages, will they not say these people are crazy? 24 But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all. 25 And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, and so falling down on his face he will worship God, and report that God is in you of a truth. But if everyone is prophesying, the unbeliever or one unlearned will be convicted and instructed by hearing God's word. Rom. 10.17 And thus the secrets of his heart are exposed, and so, falling on his face, he will worship God and declare that it is true that God is speaking through you. He will recognize his need to decide to believe the gospel or to grow spiritually. 26. How is it then, brethren? When ye come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. Paul said that everyone was given different gifts, 12.10, 28-30, so why then are the Corinthians saying they all have the same gifts? They're spiritual. Gifts had become a competition in the flesh for the limelight. 27 If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. 28 But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Paul gives the regulations for speaking in tongues. Tongues should only be spoken if an interpreter is present. There should be groups of two or three, and one of them should be the interpreter. If there was no interpreter, the tongue speaker should keep quiet. He could speak later at home to himself and God. 29 Let the prophets speak two or three, and let the other judge. 30 If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. 31 For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and all may be comforted. 32 And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. 33 For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Paul delineates the rules for prophets. Let the prophets speak in groups of two or three, with one judging if he is speaking for God. If anything is revealed to someone who is sitting nearby, let him not blurt out what came to his mind, but let him wait to speak. Let the first speaker pause and allow him to insert what was revealed to him. Everyone should take turns prophesying so everyone can hear, learn, and be comforted. Control your spirits, they should be subject to you, you are not to be ruled by them or be impulsive. God is a God of order and peace in the churches, not confusion. 34 Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. 35 And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Paul gives instructions concerning women in the local assembly. Women are to keep silent and are not permitted to speak in the church, but are commanded to be under obedience, as the law also said. When Eve sinned, all women were made subject to their husbands by God. Genesis 3 verse 16 In the culture at Corinth, the men generally talked among themselves and the women were sitting in another place. If the women want to learn, let them ask their husbands at home what was said. Godly husbands are a blessing, but Christ is the teacher of us all. F. 
525, 26. Women could speak with sign gifts, 11 colon 5, but why was it a shame for them to do so in the church? Because God ordained that for the sake of order, only men should have leadership in the local. Assemblies, 1 Tim, 2 12, 3 colon 1 13. Does that mean that women are never to speak in church? No, people may ask questions if invited to or after the service. Paul said that women should learn in silence in all subjection. Everyone should listen attentively and respectfully to the pastor. The pastor's teaching should equip the saints to be ambassadors that will do the work of the ministry in the community, 2 Cor. 5 colon 18-21. A mature pastor will recognize that each member has the Spirit of Christ in them, Gal. 328, and be delighted when the saints use their Bible knowledge to save souls and teach sound Bible doctrine outside the local assembly, 1 Tim. 2 colon 4. Jesus bids us shine with a clear, pure light, like a little candle burning in the night. In this world of darkness we must shine, you in your small corner, and I in mine. From a song by Susan B. Warner, 1864, Paul wrote, Help those women which labored with me in the gospel, philosophy. For colon 3, the way to clearly teach God's word now is to point to the correct verse in the Bible. This way the truth of what God said is between God and the other person. God's word is perfect, but all people are imperfect. 36 what? Came the word of God out from you? Or came it unto you only? The word of God did not originate with the prideful Corinthians or come only to them, but it came to Paul first. 37 If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. 38 But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. If any man thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things I, Paul, write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. But, if any man is ignorant of Paul's distinctive apostleship to the Gentiles, let him remain ignorant. Rom. 11 13, 15 16, 1 Tim. 6 3 5. We are stabilized by 1. Paul's gospel of justification by faith. 2. The preaching of Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. 3, and the rest of the Bible. 39 Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy, and forbid not to speak with tongues. Desire to prophesy which is to speak the words of God, 1231, but allow the speaking of tongues for now. 40 Let all things be done decently and in order. Our Apostle Paul gives us our commandments from the Lord Jesus Christ for this dispensation. Chapter 15 Concerning the Hope of Resurrection 15,1-34 Proof of the Resurrection 15,35-49 Process of the Resurrection 15,50-58 Pending victory over death as the motivation for faithful service 15 colon 1 Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, this is the climax of Paul's letter, the greatest exposition of the resurrection and the Father's glory plan to exalt his Son in two realms in the Bible. In addition, Paul declares the same gospel he preached to Corinthians that they also received in Acts 18. They were already justified and standing by faith in Christ. Before the foundation of the world, God knew that if he gave his creatures free will they may make the wrong decision so his solution to the sin problem was his son's imputed righteousness, but God did not reveal this glorious gospel of justification by faith until Paul, Acts 13 verses 38 and 39, Rom. 3 colon 21 dash 31, 4 colon 1 dash 25, 5 colon 1, 17, 2 cor. 4 colon 3, 4, 5 21, 1 Peter 1 verse 20, Dot. 2 By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. If you remember what I originally preached unto you, otherwise you believed in vain. Because if any of them thought the gospel did not include the resurrection then they were not saved. Some at Corinth were saying that there was no resurrection and that the dead would not rise. 
Paul logically shows that both Christ's death for our sins and his resurrection are essential components of the gospel of our salvation. Without the resurrection, we believe in vain because Christ's resurrection is tied to our own. 3. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Paul restates the gospel that Christ had revealed to him which he delivered to them before he told them anything else. Christ died by crucifixion, Zach. 12.10, not only for Israel's sins as prophesied, PSA. 22 and 69 colon 15, ISA. 53, but for our sins and mystery, his heavenly group which was not prophesied. Mankind was helpless and hopeless. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Rom. 3.23, not only did we inherit Adam's sin, but we all sinned by one man, Adam, sin entered into the world, and... death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned, Rom. 5.12. For in that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, he was buried, the placing of his body in the tomb confirms his death and his putting away of our sins. And that he rose again the Father accepted his perfect blood sacrifice as a fully satisfying payment for all sins, ISA. 53.11. 1 John 2 verse 2. The third day according to the scriptures refers to the sign of Jonah which was prophesied in the word of God, Matt. 1240, John 2 verse 19. The grave could not hold him, Acts 2 verse 24. The empty tomb is proof that he rose, Luke 24 verses 44 to 48. Christianity rests on facts. His death, burial, and resurrection are facts that were confirmed by many eyewitnesses. 5. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, he appeared to Cephas, Peter was the leader of the twelve, Luke 24 verse 34, and then to the twelve, Matthias was there. Paul was not qualified to be one of the twelve apostles, Acts 1 verses 21 and 22. Paul made it clear that he was not one of the twelve, for he is the one apostle to the one body of Christ. 6. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. Paul is the only one who reveals that Christ was seen by more than 500 at one time. Most of those eyewitnesses of his resurrection were still alive and could be questioned. 7. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. Christ was seen by James, the Lord's half-brother, then by all the apostles including Thomas. The angels told the twelve on Mount Olivet that Jesus would return in the same way they saw him leave, Acts 1 verses 9 to 12, dot. 8. And last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. Paul also saw Christ after his resurrection, but he saw the risen ascended glorified Lord Jesus in the air, just as he will return for us, on the road to Damascus in Acts 9. Those who traveled with him did not see or hear what the Lord said, therefore the rapture may be a secret meeting, Acts 9 colon 7, 22 colon 9. He was born out of due time, 15 colon 8, and separated from his mother's, Israel's, womb, Gal. 1 15, for a separate ministry, Gal. 1 colon 1, 11, 12. For a while Paul was the only person on earth saved into a different new dispensation, 1 Tim. 1 colon 12 16 dot 9 for I am the least of the apostles but am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Paul says he is the least of the apostles because he persecuted the messianic kingdom church Acts 8 verses 1 to 3 9 colon 1 26 colon 11 Gal 1 13 1 Tim 1 13 the 12 will sit on the 12 thrones. Judging the Twelve Tribes of Israel in the Kingdom, Matt, 1928, 2143, dot. 10. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. But by the grace of God, I am, what I am, the Apostle of the Gentiles, Rom, 1113, his grace which was bestowed on me was not for nothing, but I worked more fervently than all of the twelve, yet it was not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Paul acknowledged the power of Christ's Spirit in him. Paul worked harder to get the message to the whole world than the twelve. 
Paul communicated the gospel he preached among the Gentiles to Peter's group. They understood that God had put them on hold and agreed that only Paul should go to all lost. Gal. 2 7-9 After the Jerusalem Council, Paul's was the only valid gospel. Gal. 1 6-9 11 Therefore whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. 12 Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Whether it was I or the twelve or the others Paul just mentioned, we preached the resurrection and you believed. Most of the believers at Corinth were saved by the gospel, good news, that Paul preached, but some were also saved by Apollos and others by Peter and his group. Both Peter and Paul preached the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. But Peter did it as a murder indictment, bad news before Paul spoke to him, Acts 2 verse 23. Peter preached that Jesus of Nazareth is the king prophesied since the world began, Jesus Christ will replace Adam and sit on David's throne in the kingdom on earth, Genesis 3 verse 15, Acts 2 verses 29 to 38, 321. Paul revealed that Christ's death on the cross and resurrection allowed the Father to impute his son's righteousness to two groups, Peter's and Paul's, Rom. 3 21 21-31 Paul then reproves them by asking, If all of us preach that Christ rose from the dead, why are some of you denying what we preach? 13 But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. 14 And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Paul explains what the consequences would be if Christ did not rise from the dead by a series of ifs. Everyone's resurrection is dependent on and linked to Christ's. But if Christ has not risen, then our preaching is useless, and your faith is worthless. 15 Yeah, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. Yes, and we are. found false witnesses because we testified that God raised up Christ. If he did not resurrect, then there is no resurrection of the dead. 16 For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. 17 And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. For if there is no resurrection of dead believers, then that means Christ did not rise. If Christ was not raised, then your faith has no eternal value. You would still be in your sins if the Father had not accepted Christ's payment. John 8 verse 24 18 Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. Then those who have died believing in Christ, whose bodies are now asleep, are perished and will not live again. 19 If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. If we only have hope in Christ in this life, then we are of all men most miserable. We are doing this for nothing and wasting our time. 20 But now is Christ risen from the dead, and become the firstfruits of them that slept. But now it is a true fact that Christ rose from the dead, on Sunday, Leviticus. 23 10, 11, And he is the firstfruits to have a glorified body of those who died in faith. We have a living God. 21 For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For since a man, Adam, sinned which brought death, Rom, 5, 12, 17 to 19, by a man came the resurrection of the dead. Jesus Christ became a man and was resurrected from death to undo what Adam had done. 22, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. When Adam sinned, he lost the spirit that God had breathed into him and his light, Genesis 2, verse 17. Adam lost his innocence, even so, in Christ will all be made alive again, but will never lose his righteousness. 132 Cor. 410, 11, Gal. 122. 23 But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. Every man will be raised in his own order, first Christ, the firstfruits, Colossians 1 verses 18 and 19, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. Christ comes for us in the air at the rapture, which was a mystery, and for his kingdom saints at his prophesied second coming to earth, Job 19 verses 25 to 27, 33 colon 24 dash 26, ISA, 26 colon 19, 59 colon 20 dash 60 colon 3, Ezek, 
37 colon 11 dash 14, Zach, 14 colon 4, John 5 verses 25 to 29, Heb, 9 28. 24 Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. 25 For he must reign, till he hath put all enemies under his feet. 26 The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. 27 For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put, Under him, it is manifest that he is accepted which did put all things under him. 28 And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. After Christ has taken possession of heaven and earth, then comes the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to Father God, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. The Father said to the Son, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Psalm 110 verse 1. It is evident that the Father who put all things under his Son is accepted. The Father has already given all power and authority to the Son. Matt. 28 colon 18. For Christ must reign a thousand years until he has put all his enemies under his feet. Rev 20 colon 4. 7 to 9. Through death, Christ destroyed him, Satan, that had the power of death, Heb, 2.14, and now he has the keys of hell and death, Revelation 1 verse 18. Satan knew who Jesus was but not what he did on the cross until he heard it from Paul, 1 Cor, 2 colon 6 dash 8, F, 3.10, by the way Satan you lost the heavenly places forever also. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. All his enemies will be cast into the lake of fire, Revelation 20 verses 9 to 15. When all things are subdued under him, then shall the Son subject himself unto the Father. 29 Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? Why else have the believers been spiritually identified with his death, burial, and resurrection? Rom. 6 3 9 If the dead will not rise at all? 30 And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? Why do we take a stand for the truth and risk our lives continually? 31 I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. I am making this defense of the resurrection so we can rejoice in Christ Jesus our Lord. I assure you that I die to my sinful flesh daily and put myself in subjection to the truth of what God said. 32 If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantageth at me, if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. If I contended and fought with those beast-like men at Ephesus, 16 colon 9, Titus 1 verse 12, what profit is my struggle if the dead do not rise? The mob uproar in Acts 19 verse 40 had not happened yet, but Paul was already dealing with many adversaries. Then I did all that work in vain. Let us eat and drink if we are just going to die. 33 Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Be not deceived into believing the corrupt communication that there is. No resurrection. Do not associate with them because wrong thinking results in wrong conduct. 34 Awake to righteousness, and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Paul wants them to wake up and act like the righteous saints there in him, 130. It is a shame that some of them speak this evil heresy saying there is no resurrection, for such communication is sin. They need to follow the truth that Christ teaches them through Paul. It is a shame that some at Corinth do not have the knowledge of how righteous God is. Some think they can act however they want and that they will not be evaluated for their service done in their body while on earth at the judgment seat of Christ. 1 Cor. 3 13, 2 Cor. 5 10. 35 But some man will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Paul gives the specifics of resurrection. 36 Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. 37 And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain, it may chance of wheat, or of some other grain. 38 But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. You fool, 
the seed which you plant will not come to life unless it dies. The body you sow is not the same body that you shall have. We will get different bodies than what we have now. But God may use the bare grain such as an atom of the one we have now. God will raise or resurrect each body as it pleases him and give to each seed his own body. The glorified body retains the identity and individuality of the believer. 39 All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. 40 There are also celestial bodies, and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Just like there are different kinds of flesh, men, beasts, fish, birds, so there are different types of glorified bodies. The heaven-bound saints and the earth-bound saints will both have glorified bodies that shine, but they will each be different. Job 33 verses 24 to 26, Ezek 37 colon 13, 14, Joel 3 verse 21. One kind is celestial, suited for heaven, and another is terrestrial, suited for the earth. 41 There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. Some will shine brighter than others just as each star shines with a different intensity or wattage, Dan, 12 colon 2, 3. This is how the resurrection of the dead is. Christ's light will shine in us in the heavenly places. His light will also shine in believing Israel on his return to earth, Rom, 11 colon 25 dash 27, dot, 42 so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, the dead decay, it is raised in incorruption, 43 it is sown in dishonor, had sin, it is raised in glory, it is sown in weakness, unable to keep the law, it is raised in power, 44 it is sown in natural body, subject to death, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. 45 And so it is written, The first man Adam was made a living soul, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Adam became a living soul, Genesis 2 verse 7. The NKJV makes the error of saying living being. We can take our soul with us when we die, but not our living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit and reversed the curse the first Adam brought into the world. 46 Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. We have natural bodies before we receive our spiritual bodies. 47 The first man is of the earth, earthy, the second man is the Lord from heaven. The first man Adam was made from the dust of the earth mixed with water, the second man is the Lord from heaven. 48 As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. 49 And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. We were earthy and made in Adam's likeness, but we will be like the Lord when he rose. 50 Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Nor can anyone inherit the kingdom of God in these living flesh and blood bodies, Leviticus. 1711, Joel 3 verse 21, we need special bodies that can endure for eternity. All believers will receive immortal glorified bodies. 51 Behold, I shew you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Paul now reveals a mystery, a divine secret that is exclusive to the body of Christ about the rapture. Some will be alive at the rapture and not die, but all will be changed. 52 In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. This change will occur as fast as a twinkling of an eye, in a fraction of a second, with two sounds of a trumpet. At the first trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first, 1 Thess. 4.16, then with the last, second. Trump, we shall be changed, 1552. Paul includes himself. We will all be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, 1 Thess. For 17, 
The trump is the sound that the trumpet makes. It may be the voice of our Lord as mentioned in the resurrection of the kingdom on earth saints at his second coming. John 5 verses 25 to 29, Rev 1 10, 20 colon 6, dot. 53 for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. The corruptible, dead saints, must put on incorruption, and mortal, living saints, must put on immortality, so the vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, philosophy. 321. 54 So when this corruptible, dead in Christ, shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal, subject to death, shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. 55 O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? 56 The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. 57 But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. When we have our special bodies, then death is swallowed up in victory. Paul quotes Isaiah 25 verse 8, and then Hosea 13 verse 14, and applies them to us. God will not change his mind about giving both groups victory over death and the grave. Paul explains that the thing that brought death was sin and the thing that made sin worse was the law, wrong. 623, 7,9. Christ's death dealt with the root cause of the sin problem that originated when Adams disobeyed God after Satan tricked Eve. But thanks be to God that the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven and earth can never be undone. 58 Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Paul now applies the sure fact of the resurrection to the believer's conduct. We can be stable in our Apostle Paul's doctrine and unmoved by false ideas about Christ's resurrection. Since Christ's resurrection is a proven fact, we can always be abounding in the work of the Lord. Our resurrection at the rapture motivates us to serve God now and to do His will, 1 Tim. 2 colon 4, sharing the gospel and the mystery is not in vain in the Lord. Rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Tim. 2 15, helps us to have clarity of what the true gospel is. Christ took our sins and gives us His righteousness, His life, His spirit, and light when we trust the gospel. Our rewards in heaven are determined by what we do in our life here on earth. This life is a place of service and preparation for our eternal life to come, 1 Tim 4 8. The things that we have done with Christ's Spirit working through us as we live by faith in His Word will be of value at the judgment seat of Christ. At the JSOC, God will read our meter and determine our capacity to serve in a job. To God be the glory. By Fanny Crosby, 1875. To God be the glory great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life in atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Refrain. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Zero come to the Father through Jesus, the Son and give him the glory great things he has done. O oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest defender who truly believes, that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Great things he has taught us, great things he has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus, the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be, our wonder, our transport, when Jesus we see. Chapter 16 Concerning the Collection for the Saints, Faith, and Farewell 16,1-24 Instruction for the Collection for the Poor Saints in Jerusalem, Stand Fast in the Faith, and Salutations. 16,1 Now concerning the Collection for the Saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. 2 Upon the first day of the week let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. 3. And when I come, whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters, then will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem. 4. And if it be meet that I go also, they shall go with me.
Now concerning the collection of money for the poor saints in Jerusalem, do the same as I ordered the churches in Galatia to do. On the first day of the week, Sunday, let each one of you set aside a sum in proportion as God has prospered him so that no collection will need to be taken after I come. Pick whoever is trustworthy to take the generous offering to Jerusalem and send me a letter of their recommendation. If it is fitting for me to go also, then we will go together. 5. Now I will come unto you, when I shall pass through Macedonia, for I do pass through Macedonia. 6. And it may be that I will abide, yea, and winter with you, that ye may bring me on my journey whithersoever I go. 7. For I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you, if the Lord permit. 8. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. 9. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. Paul plans to spend more time edifying them after he goes through Macedonia, Rom. 1519, he did spend the winter with them, Acts 20 verse 3. Paul wrote this letter from Ephesus. The great open door for ministry was probably his teaching at the school of Tyrannus, Acts 19 verse 9. The enemies were the silver and coppersmiths who made the shrines to the goddess Diana, Acts 19 verse 24. 10 Now if Timotheus come, see that he may be with you without fear, for he worketh the work of the Lord, as I also do. 11 Let no man therefore despise him, but conduct him forth in peace, that he may come unto me, for I look for him with the brethren. When Timothy arrives please make him feel at ease, for he does the work of the Lord like me. Do not let anyone despise him, for colon 10-16, but kindly conduct him on his way. For I look for him to come back to me with the others. Timothy fully understood Paul's. Distinctive Ministry and Apostolic Authority The solution to division and denominations in the church is to unite behind Apostle Paul, 1 colon 10 12, dot. 12 As touching our brother Apollos, I greatly desired him to come unto you with the brethren, but his will was not at all to come at this time, but he will come when he shall have convenient time. As for brother Apollos, I greatly urged him to come to you, but he said he would come some other time. The Corinthians wanted Paul to send the eloquent Apollos, but he was not eager to exploit his popularity with a return visit at this time. 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit ye like men, be strong. 14. Let all your things be done with charity. Watch to make sure you stand fast, rooted, grounded, and built up, in the faith Paul taught them, 2 Thess. 2.15. Act like mature spiritual men in the faith, be courageous, Fight for it. Let all you do be motivated by charity. 15. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanas, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. 16. That ye submit yourselves unto such, and to every one that helpeth with us, and laboreth. Like bookends, Paul mentions Stephanas in the first chapter, 116, and in the last, 1615, 17. Paul was so glad they had addicted themselves to the ministry and were eager to save souls and share Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Please submit yourselves to such Pauline leaders and everyone who helps in this work with us with respect and listen to them attentively. May we all devote ourselves to fight to get out God's word rightly divided in order to save souls and edify the body of Christ. 17. I am glad of the coming of Stephanas and Fortunatus and Achaicus, for that which was lacking on your part they have supplied. 18. For they have refreshed my spirit and yours, therefore acknowledge ye them that are such. Paul was glad that these three men came and treated him with the respect due to him as their apostle. They refreshed his spirit by giving him a list of questions the church was asking. They wanted his instruction, advice, and words of wisdom for the believers at Corinth. They were courteous and showed Paul the apostolic regard that many of the Corinthians did not, to their shame, for 14. Treat people like these with respect. 19. The Churches of Asia Salute You Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord, with the church that is in their house. Salutations from Paul's several churches in Asia Minor. Aquila and Priscilla, whom they knew, had a church in their home again and send their greetings. 20. All the brethren greet you. 
Greet ye one another with an holy kiss. Paul wants them to be affectionate to one another. 21. The salutation of me, Paul, with mine own hand. Paul signs the letter himself. He began doing so after the forged letter to the Thessalonians, 2 Thess. 3 17 18. 22. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. If any man does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be left behind at the rapture when he comes. Do not associate with a brother who does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, but let him be accursed, expelled out of the assembly so the assembly is not affected by his heretical unbelief. The way to love the Lord Jesus is to believe what he told us through his apostle Paul. Who should be anathema maranatha? Those who deny his resurrection. God knows where everybody's dust is. 23. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. 24. My love be with you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. Paul prays that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with them. He wrote this letter out of love for them and us. Appendix. The mysteries revealed to Paul. In the Bible, a mystery is a divine secret not revealed by God until he decides to reveal it. God has now revealed it. Rom. 1625-26 It is hidden wisdom of God, 1 Cor. 2 colon 7 Where was it hidden? God hid this body of information in himself, which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, f. 3 colon 9 the ascended, glorified Lord Jesus Christ saved Saul of Tarsus and made him Paul, the apostle of the Gentiles, Rom. 1113, Christ began a new dispensation with Paul as the first member of the body of Christ, 1 Tim. 115, 16. Christ made Paul a steward of the mysteries of God, 1 Cor. For colon 1, like the steward in Luke 12 verse 42, Paul was wise and faithful to hand out to the body of Christ the revelation of the mysteries he received from Christ, Gal. 1 11, 12. 1. We live in a giant parenthesis. The parenthesis is bookend by Christ's two appearings. First to Paul on the road to Damascus and then at the rapture, Titus 2 verses 11 and 13 f. 3 colon 1 9, 1 cor. 917, the dispensation of grace, a mystery, has been inserted and the nation of Israel has been put on hold because God has postponed his dealings with them, Acts 15, Gal. 2 colon 7-9, Rom. 1111, 11, 12, 15, 17, 25, 26. 2. It was a mystery that God would save another group of people from all nations that believe Christ died for our sins, in mystery, was buried, and rose again, 1 Cor. 15 colon 1 4. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13. 3. Our formation was the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, 1 Cor. 2 colon 7. This group, the one new man, F. 215, is made up of both believing Jews and Gentiles, Gal. 328, the middle wall of partition has been broken down so the Jews are not God's preferred people at this time there is no difference, Rom. 322, 1012. 4. The realm the body of Christ is destined for is the heavenly places for all eternity, F. 2 colon 6, 2 cor. 5 colon 1, Colossians 3 verses 1 to 4, not the earth. 5. Paul does not want us to be ignorant of this mystery, that blindness in part is happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come and of the duration of the nation of Israel's partial blindness is until the rapture. Rom. 11.25 6. Behold, I shew you a mystery we shall not all sleep, die, but we shall all be changed. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51 some will be alive at the rapture. The rapture and the subsequent judgment seat of Christ are exclusively found in Paul's letters. The previously unknown meeting when the church will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, 1 Thess. For colon 13-18 is followed by Christ evaluating us for service, a job.
Because he rose from dead in a new glorified body, we will also be changed and given immortal bodies at the rapture, 1 Cor. 4 colon 5, 15 colon 51 dash 54, Philosophy. 3 20, 21. Seven, the mystery of godliness. One Tim three sixteen is that Christ lives in us and is being manifested to the world through us until the rapture. This verse is a synopsis of the role of the church in the dispensation of grace. His spirit in us enlightens us. F one eighteen the mystery which is Christ in you the hope of glory. Colossians one verse twenty seven eight the mystery of Christ. Colonel 116 for colon 3 is that God had a twofold purpose to redeem believers in both heaven and on earth by one cross f 1 colon 9 10 9 God gave progressive revelation Paul was given the final hidden mystery revelation to fulfill complete the word of God Colossians 1 verses 25 and 26 for the saints 10 the result of the Godhead's plan, F. 1 colon 4, is hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of mystery of God, and the Father, and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, Colossians 2 verses 2 and 3. 11. The mystery of his will in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things, in heaven and earth, in Christ, F. 1 colon 9, 10. 12. The mystery of iniquity that began with Satan is at work in the world, but is hindered from fulfillment while the body of Christ is still being formed during the dispensation of grace until after a rapture. 2 Thess. 2 colon 7. 13. We are to hold on to the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. 1 Tim. 3 colon 9. Philosophy. 3 17. The faith is the body of doctrine written to us in Paul's letters, described as the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, Rom. 1625. 14. Paul said that if we consider what I say, the mystery, and the Lord give the understanding in all things, 2 Tim. 2 colon 7. The all things is the rest of the Bible or prophecy, the scriptures of the prophets, Rom. 1625-26 15. The Great Mystery, F. 5 colon 30-32 is our union to Christ, 1 Cor. 617. We grow up into Him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, F. 414. The body members are joined to Him in fellowship, transformed, and have been made joint heirs with Him, Rom. 817-29 12 colon 1, 2, Gal, 2, 20, 4, 19, 1, Tim, 3, 15, 16. Mike Liney Inti. Time past 21.1. About the author. Rightly dividing the war. 215. Sigh. Acts. Fall. Acts 9. Mystery. But now. Acts 15. AI. Rapture. The Dispensation of Grace. East. Gentiles. J.S. Jerusalem. Last Days. Chief. A.U.L. and. Ding the War. 215. Sigh. Act. Jerusalem. Last Days. Chief blessed to have been saved in 1990 and rightly divided body of a turn hereafter believe mystery of Godin gospel Roman vessel unto dish Heb gosp Marian Manley is blessed to have been saved in 1990 and rightly dividing the word of truth 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 for several years she only wishes she would have been saved and come to the knowledge of the truth 1 Timothy 2 verse 4 sooner but now she is making up for lost time. She is recording and sharing what she learns so others do not need to waste time as she did. She has been enjoying daily personal Bible study, reading through the Bible, and memorizing scripture for the past 31 years.
It is so thrilling when we understand what God said. W. A retired nurse midwife, she has devoted the rest of her life to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. F. 3 colon 9. She has been teaching the Bible for more than 20 years. Her rightly dividing Bible studies are available on Facebook and YouTube at Truth Be Told. Her website is MarianneManley.com. Her joy after understanding the Bible better led her to edify the body of Christ by writing God's secret. Then Romans, a concise commentary. First Corinthians, a commentary. Second Corinthians, a commentary in Galatians, a commentary, Ephesians, a commentary, and Philippians, Colossians, Philemon commentary, and Treasure Hunt Volume 2, Paul's prison epistles, Why was the earth without form, void, and dark? Just as God said for children, the certainty of the pre-tribulation rapture, first and second Thessalonians commentary. Paul's pastoral epistles, first and second Timothy, Titus, and Philemon commentary, Treasure Hunt Volume 3, Paul's T Books, Acts of the Apostles Commentary Part 1, 2, 3. Missed the rapture? Read this commentary on Hebrew, How to Be Saved Made Simple, and the Rightly Dividing Study Guides. Many people have all her books. Other Books by Marianne Manley God's Secret A Primer with Pictures for How to Rightly Divide the Word of Truth on Amazon.com in Black and White Edition and in Spanish El Secreto de Dios. Rightly Dividing 1 Corinthians Study Guide Rightly Dividing Romans Study Guide Romans, a concise commentary, also in a black and white edition 1 Corinthians, a commentary 2 Corinthians, a commentary Galatians, a commentary Ephesians, a commentary Philippians, Colossians, Philemon commentary The Certainty of the Pre-Tribulation Rapture 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, Paul's Pastoral Epistles, Timothy Letters, Titus, and Philemon Commentary. Treasure Hunt Volume 1, Commentary Only Romans to Galatians. Treasure Hunt Volume 2, Commentary Only on Paul's Prison Epistles. Treasure Hunt Volume 3, Commentary on Paul's Tea Books. Why was the earth without form, void, and dark? Just as God said. Acts of the Apostles Commentary Part 1, 2, 3 Miss the Rapture? Read this commentary on Hebrews. How to be saved made simple, this booklet is perfect for our lost loved ones. Could God have a 7,000 year plan for mankind? Also in black and white in AD 34 the year Jesus died for all, same content as could God, in 9 by 6 size. The author may be contacted by email at mariannemanley at sbcglobal.net. Please visit her website, www.mariannemanley.com, free.pdf, files, facebook.com slash marianne.manley.7. Follow her on Facebook at In God's Secret Facebook page at facebook.com slash Primer with pictures. Find her on YouTube, just type in her name and find her teaching the Bible. A chapter at a time on Truth Be Told YouTube channel or on her salvation, rightly dividing, and the Rapture YouTube channel or call 858-273-2049.